Alrighty, guys. It's time. Round five. Uncommons store championship. New York City. I'm on the right. On the left is Cal. He's a relatively new player in New York, but he is pretty good considering he's been playing a lot less long than some of us other uh, New York net runners. He, uh, he did pretty well at the 20 sided store championship, and here he is against me in round five. Uh, I've got two losses going into this round, both to the same person. <laughs> um, and I think Cal might also have two losses coming into this round. So it's going to get interesting. I'm running first. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Cal is he's really good. Uh, you know, like I said, for someone who's only been playing for a little while. But, you know, he is still new. And he still makes some mistakes. So these two games you're going to see are great, great games uh, to learn a lot from. Uh, there's going to be a lot of lessons learned here. Pay attention, guys, uh, and you will improve your net running uh, dramatically. Uh, anything else to say here? You can see the Uncommons is it's a cool place to go to play a board game. Uh, you know, get some coffee or a donut or whatever. But uh, it's a little tight, especially when there's a Netrunner tournament and the place is still open for business. So you'll see a few people like reach in and try to get board games off the shelf there uh, while we're playing. But uh, because I use my secret strategy of put the tripod on the table, nothing comes between the camera and the game. Uh, so, yeah, I think there were even like uh, there were even some players who were you know they, they, for in the tournament who couldn't find a table uh, to play at. You know, they they asked me uh, to take the camera down, which you know it, it's there there wasn't really enough room where the camera was to play a full game of of Netrunner. It was it was pretty tight. But, uh, you know, if I, if I moved it, that would have been pretty much... You wouldn't be watching this round right now, right? Um, you know, the alternative was to put it on the other side uh, by the board games, and then no one can get any board games, and yeah. That wouldn't have happened, so... I think they found a table to play at, so it's all good. Alrighty. Shuffling, shuffling. He didn't like his opening hand. I think it was loaded with agendas. I would have mulliganed that hand as well. Is there anything else important to talk about while this shuffling is happening? Mm, don't get mid-seasoned. <laughs> mid-season replacements is a card. People still play that. It still works. I haven't really played it against it uh, nearly. Oh, see, there it is. Mid-season replacements. I haven't played it against it um, as much as I probably should have. And... You know, so I, my, even my experience against it was not was not a lot. So here we go. Install, install, hedge fund. All righty. Run. Run, run, run. Immediately run. Make him spend that money. Pop-up window. Well, that's the opposite of making him spend money, right? <laughs> that is MBN. That's why I play it. What do I do? Do I want to access... Yeah, I'll, I'll pay my one. And... There we go. Not exciting. Run R&D. There we go. But I lost a click, which is actually kind of annoying. <laughs> you know, usually I'm thinking Quandary is just better, but... Losing that click was, was slightly... But, you know, I could have drawn a card this turn. <laughs> Basically took away a draw from me with that. You pay two credits to deny me a draw? Hmm. I don't know. Versus Quandary. I just like Quandary. You just stay rich the whole time. All right, so he's gonna—he denied me the draw. But look, if he would have let me draw without the Quandary with a Quandary instead of Enigma, he would have had two more credits, and his sweep sweep would have gotten him an extra credit. So maybe Quandary is just better. <laughs> Okay, daily casts. You're going to see here, right? Daily cast just makes, you know, it doesn't look like it makes you a lot of money. Like, you spend three, you put it down, and you feel like you just lost money. But you get two free every turn. That's like having underworld, two underworld contacts, right? You, you know. 
It's like a it's like a slow bank job. Eight credits coming out of there. It's it's big. Okay. So since he's got the pop-up window and he drew some cards, but he hasn't used any cards, um, you know, I ran HQ a little bit, and I guess there's a Beal in there I could have had, but I didn't get it, so. It's actually kind of good I didn't get it, because look how many credits he has. Um, you know, mid-season right there would have been pretty bad, pretty bad. Very bad. <laughs> I probably would never gotten out from under that, even though the score is still nothing-nothing. I probably would, you know... And he could have trashed my daily cast, which really would have been GG. Yeah, see, two daily casts going now. Big, big money. Drawing cards. Draw more cards. He iced up HQ. I guess he doesn't want me uh, running in there right away. Right. And let's get the data sucker rolling. Early, it's all about getting Data Sucker early, right? If you get it late, the servers are already locked up, right? And it's going to be very hard to fill it up. If you get it early, then you can fill it up while the servers, the centrals are still pretty soft, right? And then because it's filled up, you'll be able to get into the harder servers because you've got a bunch of Data Sucker tokens. Um, you know, so I, I even, you know, in games recently, like if I get an SMC on the first turn, I'll put it down run and if i get into a central you know because they don't res or, or the ice is like a pop-up window it's porous i'll turn the smc into a data sucker right before access uh to get it started as early as possible right it's, the, it's like the most important card all right he set up a remote how can i not check it check it i can't let you just get away with that's an astro script all right it's a bernice okay so trace seven on the bernice and so you think about it, it's trace seven on the Bernice. To remove the tag would cost two credits and a click, so that's three. And then the trash of the Bernice would be three. And I have a link, so that's six. So it's six either way. I might as well save my click and just spend the six credits to beat Bernice's trace. And she dies also when you beat her trace. So if you would have made it trace eight, then it might have been worth it to take the tag, trash Bernice, remove the tag. But at trace, uh, at trace 7, and I have a link, uh, I'll pay the 6 credits. If I didn't have the link, then I might have taken the tag as well. Just the math of the economy works out that way. You know, if you were going to use that click to take a credit, right? Okay, now he's set up a server with an ice on it. So I'll make him res the ice. And it's a Bastion. Boom. Now, if he's playing a mid-season deck, right? He's got a lot of credits there. Oh, I guess I also have a lot of credits right now. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, so letting me have the agenda there, not the good idea, because his mid-seasons will not give me any tags. Because uh, I'm loaded on money. So those two daily casts, all the money they gave, really... Um, you know, that's, that's me just having the money is what forced him to res that Bastion, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and it, again, rezzing the Bastion makes it harder for him to mid-season me because right, it's four less credits on the trace. You're going to see I'm pretty much going to make him res all his ice uh, to drain his economy as much as possible. He doesn't have a lot of ice because it is a mid-season deck, but whatever he does have, uh, I will not, uh, I'm going to make him pay for it. So there's a Hunter, right? I'll take the tag on the Hunter because he boosted the trace to five. And it's easier, right? Rather than spend four credits, I'll spend a click and two credits to remove the tag after. Then there's a pop-up window. I'll pay one. I'll get my data sucker to start going here. And we'll access. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we got. Randomize my pull and a closed accounts. Yeah, if I get mid-seasoned, I might not have any. <laughs> I definitely do not want to, yeah. <laughs> see, closed accounts and I have a pile of money. Remove tag. Yes, please. Yes, please. No closed accounts today. And I'll take a credit. Okay, so what was that there behind his... Uh, now, I could have gotten in past that Bastion, right? But it was a huge pain in the ass, and I would have used up my self-modifying code. It could have been an Astro script, right? But it was it was just too costly for me to, to do anything about it. A Bastion is pretty strong. Um, if I had a few more Data Suckers tokens... 
Uh, I almost definitely would have gone for it, right? Thankfully, it was a Beal and not an Aster script. Good for me. Very good for me. Okay, let's run archives. Make them res that. It's a data hound. Very interesting choice for archives. I like it. Um, okay, he traced me. I beat the trace. You know, he threw out a closed accounts, but I got my data sucker, and I made him res an ice. Cost him a credit. And he... All right. So now I'm going to parasite. See, R&D. And run R&D. Goodbye, Enigma. That's right. And what do I see? Oh... Oh, not good. Run again. Oh, no. Oh, four-point play right there. Woo. All right. Is the midseason going to come down? I've got eight credits, and he's got four. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? See? He spent all that money doing stuff. He doesn't have enough money for his mid-seasons, right? He's, he, he didn't play a ton of transactions. I didn't see a lot of Beanstalk green level hedge fund restructure to activate that mid-season to really you know, put his economy over the top. So um, he's going to take a credit, and he's going to use it. Is he going to use it? Mid-season, okay. But he uses the two trace credits to boost. Ooh. So that puts it up to... Uh, a seven so I have to spend a lot of money he basically almost that was basically like closed accounts right if you think about it that midseason wasn't a you get tagged right it was a you spend all your money uh, you know almost like a reverse vamp situation um, I guess I could have taken the tags but then he's just play closed accounts and right so that's not gonna work out um, right I'm better I have to spend the money I have no choice so but now R&D is wide open. Um, I got another data sucker, right? I couldn't trash that pad campaign, though. But I know he's got it. That's in good information to have. So like, when he drops down a remote, I'm probably thinking, yeah, it's pad campaign. Okay, new ice. See, him being light on ice like this is not is not a good matchup for my Parasite deck. Right? It's, it's, you need a lot of ice. Or you need Jackson Howard to put your ice back in the deck, draw it, and put it out again. And especially things like, you know, these low strength things, Enigma. Ah, it's a somewhat real ice. Uh, Caduceus. Um, but, you know, your data hounds, your pop-up windows. You know, even that Bastion isn't really strong enough to, uh, to stand up, right? I've got four data suckers now. And an SMC. All right, so I ran the Caduceus. I only have a credit and a link. Uh, so he's just, you know, he's boosting. He didn't boost the credit once. He got his Caduceus res for free. And he boosted the end of the run just enough to stop me. Huh, actually, I, was he, was that the turn right after the midseason? Because if it was, that means that those uh, the, the recurring credits were used up on the mid-season, and he couldn't use them on the Caduceus, which is interesting. Uh, I, I didn't pay close enough attention there. All right? But yeah, NBN, you got to be careful with those recurring credits. You don't get them... You know, They only refresh at the beginning of your turn. So if you use them for a mid-season, it's a pretty rare thing, right? Then if I run a Caduceus, you can't use it to boost those traces, because right? it hasn't refreshed yet. Uh, someone tell me in the comments if, if that was the turn after the midseason or not. Okay, so he sets up something in a new server there. Well, it's not a new server. He sets up something behind the Bastion, right? Now, you got to be thinking, you're playing against a Shaper with four Data Suckers, which is enough, and you've already seen Parasite, right? Um, four Data Suckers, you've already seen a Parasite, and a self-modifying code is on the table, Right? Uh, so here, what I do is I'm actually going to trash that data sucker, right? Scavenge for the parasite. I put the grimoire on click one, and I scavenged on click two, so the grimoire adds one to the parasite. Then I run, and I take out the bastion. That four credit investment down the drain. Right? And, ooh, six to two. Ooh, that's rough, right? I mean, 
You can't install an agenda. Installing agenda behind one ice like that, no matter what ice it is, against a shaper who already has a self-modifying code on the table. That's and for enough data sucker tokens to match the strength of that ice, I could have just gotten an inti, and uh, and run there without parasiting, right? If he somehow thinks that only parasite is the one that was in the trash, um, and so a self-modifying code wouldn't help me. But it's like I could have installed clone ship and just run if I had one of those, right? So not a not a safe place to put an aster script. Um, you know, I guess maybe in, he might have been trying to mid-season me again, but that's an Astro script. That's not, you know, that's not just any old agenda, right? If you want to do that, he could have put his TG, TB true in there, right? Okay, so he's going to mid-season again, right? Yeah, if he would have put his too good to be true, uh, right? He would have been way better off there. So I would only been at five, not seven. All right, so here I'm getting mid-season now, for sure. So I'm buried in... I, I paid one credit. I think he'd he be like uh, enough tags. I paid one credit so that I have... I think six tags is how many I have. I, I didn't want seven for some reason. I'm not I'm not sure. I figured it's just, you know, if I'm ever going to remove them, which I, it's possible I might, you know, um, then... You know, paying one to remove one now is better than paying two to, and a click to remove one later. And it might matter for over advantage. I didn't do the math on it, but it, it, you know, one less tag might matter for scoring a beal at three points. Let's see. To score a beal at three points, you need to advance it three, five times. So I would, yeah, I have six. So I guess I have enough tag. It, it, you know, the, the tag, I, I probably could have saved the one credit. And not removed a, a mid-season tag, but that's okay. All right, he's got a psycho and a beal, but he doesn't have the credits to install and and win. Right, he would need a five pointer anyway. All right, so I'm looking at a card that he installs unprotected like that, and I'm thinking pad. I, I you know I saw the pad campaign in R&D. I'm thinking pad campaign all the way because I know he needs money for his psychographics. Right, and he doesn't have it, so. And I can't really trash a pad campaign right now. He could have played closed accounts. He could play closed accounts whenever he wants, but he didn't. Um, I guess, you know, I, I always have too few credits. See, look, I'm, I, I take credits and I spend them immediately. Why am I spending them immediately like that? I'm making a strength three Atman here. Um, Atman. So that I can take... I'm signaling I'm going for the R&D with the Caduceus, right? I'm, he's, he knows... I'm, you know, why would I make a strength three Atman if I wasn't doing that? Right? So I'm basically telegraphing exactly what I'm, my plan is. Uh, and he doesn't have ice in his hand, so I guess he can't do anything about my telegraph, right? He, he can't keep me out. Um, he just needs monies. All right, so why didn't he res his pad campaign there? I don't know. I guess he would have gone down a credit? Oh, I guess he's got three, and he would have yeah, gone down to two and been... Uh, he could have... No, he could have taken one, installed... And psychographics, right? Yeah, he could. He should have rezzed the pad campaign that turn. He chose not to. Okay, so he's gonna spend all his money to psychographics a veal and go to four, right? Okay, I'm sitting here thinking he still needs right, like oh, and he took the credit after. Um, I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, he needs two more agendas to win. I'm not worried, right? Um, but I forgot market research exists. So if he has four credits or three credits at the start of his turn, all right, yeah, it's a pad campaign. Just had to check and make sure, right? Um, if he has four, three credits at the start of his turn and a market research and a psychographics in hand, he can go, yep, there's the market research. So, um, he can just take a credit to go to four, install the market research, psychographics, I have four tags. And that'll be three points for the win. I did not realize this because of my lack of psychographics mid-season experience, right? It's like I know it in theory, but I just haven't played against it more than a few times. Um, but that's okay. First click on this turn, indexing, right? I'm at six points. I, you know, and I'm, I didn't realize this was such an urgent situation that I would lose in the next turn. Um... But it was an urgent situation. Now, 
luckily this indexing turns up two agendas. I moved the Astro script to the top um, just because I could. Yep, game over. And I saw, you know, just because I'd rather take an Astro script than a Beal. But uh, yeah, the <laughs> I don't know why. But um, you know, I didn't realize I was going to lose on the very next turn. You see, he's got that money there, right? Um, you know, if the indexing didn't turn up anything, what I would have done is run HQ and taken the hunter tags, completely ignored it, and just paid one for the pop-up window. So I was indexing click one, and then if that turned up nothing, I would have gone HQ, HQ, HQ for three credits, giving myself three more tags. Uh, and seeing how he had all those agendas in his hand, I, I was likely going to win there anyway, and I, and I had the same behavioral plan as if I realized the urgency of my situation, right? So even though I didn't realize my situation was, was so urgent that I was going to lose next turn um, because I forgot about psychographics market research, uh, I still did the same thing I would have done had I known that I was going to lose next turn. And that resulted, well, indexing got agendas and his hands had agendas. So yeah, that's, you know, this is the same market. The reason I don't like mid-season, I don't play it myself, and I also don't like punitive Counter-Strike too much, right, is that they sort of, you know, you, you need to really, to have them be effective, they need to hit on, like, the first thing the other guy scores, right? Um, if your opponent scores, you know, and you don't mid-season them then, and then they score, you don't mid-season them then, well, you only score three to four times in a game, you know, so mid-seasoning or counter-striking on the, the third or fourth score, it's like, no, that was, you just lost the game. <laughs> there's, there's no time, you can't punish them for it, right? You need to punish them on, like, the first score, they, the first steal, right, the runner makes. Maybe the second one. Otherwise, it's too late. And as you saw there, it was too late. He was able to mid-season me and psychographics out one agenda, but uh, not any more than that. And not having the, you know, the to make those decks work you can't have really heavy ice you need to let them come in to score you know and just try to tag them and, and hurt their economy right but let them in at the same time uh, and let them in a lot and the result of that is you know if they get close right they're going to score the final points really easily um so it can be dangerous all right so i've got only two losses on the day, only one game left, and now a little taste of my NBN. So, I guess in round four, my NBN played a pretty boring game of just score, 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 I win. Here, you're going to see taking it to the long game. Late game NBN. Not an easy win by any means. Install, install, draw. Look at that, no hedge fund, no beanstalk, no nothing. No sweeps week. Right, he's playing a Kate that is somewhat similar to mine, but not completely. He's got a Desperado there. Data Sucker, gr amazing start. Um, and then you'll see all game what he likes to do instead of taking credits is run archives. So he's used these little green gems for his credits. They're a little hard to see, especially on the green playmat. They, they bothered me a little bit in the other game, too. Um, Right, because I guess he also gets data suckers, and the Desperado gives him a credit. So there you go. But he didn't make me res my ice there. So I set up this remote right away, and there's a beanstalk. So in his hand, what he's got a parasite, an R&D interface, a sure gamble. Is that a Deus Ex? I think. Okay, he's going to run the remote. Good call. But there's an ice wall. Okay, he has a parasite in his hand. Install the parasite in the ice wall. Run, destroy it with the data sucker. Take, you know, you got to access that card. What if it's AstroScript? Okay, he runs R&D. It's Caduceus time. Um, you know, I win the money trace. I let him win the end the run trace. He accesses the card. Uh, did he not get his data sucker there? Desperado data sucker? I don't know. 
He might have forgotten it. It was Jackson Howard. It was not Astro Script. But still, you you know you gotta ask, you gotta check that. What if it was? What if it was? Big money. Drawn cards. See, now I've iced up the server even more, so uh, your parasite's not gonna get you in there very easily. Jackson is protected. I can draw into the things I need. Places dirty laundry on archives, I'm guessing. He just loves running archives to get credits and data sucker tokens. Just doing it constantly, pretty much. But he hasn't run HQ yet. He doesn't even want to make me res that ice. Uh, so he's he's focusing on R&D only. He's, he's got this R&D mindset, which I encounter a lot when people play against, you know, MBN. Is they're like, they don't want to run their remotes or anything else. They just, they're like, prevent him from drawing the agendas. Run R&D only from the... And it's like, you go to R&D, you know, I like to go from right to left, right? If, you, if they can't get a remote, right? If you stop the remote game first, then the agendas get clogged up in HQ because their remote is not safe. Then you start hitting HQ, right? This forces them to use all their ice on the remote in HQ. Then you nail R&D. You go right to left and you sort of scoop up all the agendas. If you go straight for R&D, anything that's already escaped from R&D, right, is going to be, you know, scored by the corp. And you can't, you can't let that happen. He drops the inti and he runs the remote. RSVP. Holy crap, such a good card. So now he can't spend a credit with his inti to break my ice wall. <laughs> How about that? How about that? As, that's so much better than Chum, right? I mean, Chum would be like, he'd be like, okay, I use two data suckers, I break ice wall, I access, I don't get it right. This is, nope, you can't get in. And breaking news, closed accounts. Done. Oh, look at that pile of green. Oh, he's used shirt sure, gambles. He's used dirty laundries. He's run a bunch of archives a bunch of times. And now all his money is gone. All his money is gone. That is brutal. I did that so many times. People just, you know, you. this is another reason. You, MBN puts a face down card in a remote. There's no advanced card. You have to check it. Either infiltrate it, run it, access it. You know, what's it going to be? A Bernice? A snare? Who cares? You need to run it. You cannot get breaking news closed accounts when you have 12 credits. You can't let that be an Astro script. You can't, you know. You just can't. And you saw I had Ash in there, too, which I almost accidentally scored. Uh, so that's e the Ash is even more brutal, right? If you can't break the RSVP, then no matter how much money you have, you know, if you find some, if you even if he uh, parasites the ice wall away, right? He runs the RSV. If he can't break RSVP, Ash fires. He can't beat Ash's trace, so Ash is the only card he can access. And he can't trash Ash, because that would cost him three credits. And he doesn't have Imp, right? Because he's playing Kate, and he used all his influence on Desperado, Data Sucker, and Parasite. So um, maybe a fam or something. So that remote is ridiculously secure right now. But he's going to run R&D. He's just interested in R&D. Doesn't care about the other servers. Oh, it's an NAPD contract. Okay. This card is so good as well. He scored it. He got two points. All right. All right. He got two points. He had to spend four credits. That's like a mini closed accounts right there. Right? That is a lot of money to pay. Um, you know? And he didn't have to pay it. He chose to pay it. I guess, though, if I got it for myself... Uh-oh, he took an Astro Script 2 off R&D. This is not looking good. I can't protect the house. You know? All right. There's an ice in R&D. So this this is, you know, if this was a boxing match, right? This is this is not, you know, the previous MBN game was like a first or second round knockout, right? This one is, you know, just holding on until the 10th round, waiting for the other guy to get tired, right? 
you know, I started off with, I had a big first round, right? My first round was big with that closed accounts, but now, you know, I'm just sort of struggling. I'm leaning on the ropes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm clinching him a lot, right? He's got a million data suckers. He's got a little bit of money, but he can get more. Um, R&D's wide open. He's taken four points away. It's four to one. I've got a secure remote, but that's about it. Uh, I don't have a lot of money. I'm just trying to protect what I have, you know, and to just stay in this game. Don't lose, right? Just don't lose. And I've got a plan here. See, all those data suckers are basically, they're real bad. And now he's got a zero atman, right? And I don't have a swordsman, but I do have wraparound. But wraparound won't help because there's an inti on the table. So really, um, most of my ice are... are fall down completely to that combination of three cards. The Zero Atman, the Data Sucker, and the Inti, right? They're just going to crush everything I have. He can, yep, see, here he goes for the remote right away. So he uses a bunch of Data Suckers and the Inti to break the RSVP and the Ice Wall, right? Thankfully, that cost him a lot of money, and Ash comes out. He has no money left, so... And that was also silly of him to go with no money left, knowing it could be NAPD contract. You'll notice in the previous game, um, you know, even though I won much more easily, uh, my opponent pretty much always had four credits at the end of his successful runs, or he tried to, right? I think there was even a point where he was like, oh, no, wait, wait, wait. And he, he, he took credits to go up to four and then ran, just in case it was NAPD contract. Um, so look, he actually spent a bunch to break that RSVP and Ice Wall fruitlessly. Even though he, he was allowed to spend credits on Ash, he didn't have any. If I was him in this situation, right, still being able to get into that remote, I would build up enough credits and, and resources to trash that Ash, right, um, while he still has a chance. Right? You run, you trash Ash, you run, you access the card. Two runs. Right? You don't need to break the RSVP on the second run. Uh, well, I guess you do, because his only way to break the ice wall is to spend credits. So that's, that's a really good placement of RSVP by me. But doesn't he have some way to get the parasite back and kill the ice wall? Or that roto turret? Right? He's just in love with R&D. Right? He's, he's, the single-mindedness really uh, hurt him a bit here. Right? See, he uses, I, I res the Roto Turret just to try to tax his credits. It'll cost him two credits every time and cost me four once. Right? I can't just let him go in completely for free every time. Right? Otherwise, he'll be like, run, run, run. This way, it'll be you know, run, take two, you know, run at most once a turn. Even though I see a Parasite, even though he's got a zero Atman, which makes Roto Turret not as good, um, I need to do something there. Okay, more ice. I've only got three credits. Notice also how he's completely ignored HQ. I haven't installed or I've drawn a bunch of cards he hasn't seen, and I haven't you know I've been doing stuff and he's you he could who knows how. All right, so here he start he stops ignoring HQ. Luckily, I don't have any agendas in my hand. As a sand sand, he can't trash. He only got three credits. I think that's a Draco in front of HQ, which is usually where I put it as an account siphon defense. Uh, because if they run with account siphon, you can always put all your credits into the strength of the Draco to make it ridiculously strong. And then they have nothing to siphon. And then if they try to siphon again, well, this is a ridiculously strong Draco there that they can't break, right? Unless they put a Fem token on it, which is great. Use your Fem on my Draco and not my Toll Booth. Perfect. Um, and if they do that, then the trace on the Draco is very, very likely to happen. And if the trace happens, you can dump all your credits into the trace, which tag and end the run. So you can really shut down Account Siphon completely with, with, a, with an HQ Draco. So, like I said, I'm trying to drag him into the 10th round of this boxing match, um, you know, to get him tired and worn out uh, while he's got this mid-game momentum going here. And I've sort of hatched a plan in which I will, well, I'm hatching a plan, right? By where by which I'm going to lock up all the centrals and clear virus counters, right? If I can clear the virus counters off that data sucker uh, after icing up the centrals significantly, 
it will be very, very difficult for him to refill them. Very difficult. Uh, you know, and, the, and when I was running, I talked about how I get the data sucker early and fill it up, because in the early game is when you can fill it, and in the late game is when you need it. Well, if the corp can afford to... All right, score out that beal. If the corp can afford to spend the turn clearing the virus counters uh, off that data sucker, right, in the late game, and they're still alive, how are you going to get through the servers uh, if they can res... If they can protect all the centrals, right, you're, you're in real big trouble, right? A zero admin against that RSVP, you know, that's easy for him to do right now with all those data suckers. It'll be really hard for him to do with zero data suckers. There's zero virus counters on the data set. Yeah, look, he's even resorted to using dice because he's used up all his red gems. He has so many of them. So notice I'm, I'm slowly just sort of, you know, holding on for dear life. Um, you know, trying to protect what I have. I, I've really got no credits here. I've sort of used them all. Right? Um... He's going to trash my Jackson Howard, which I'm actually happy for him to trash it because that's three less credits he has, right? I'm just taxing him. It's like I want to make him spend money. If he builds up a pile of money, then he could run my remote, beat my Ash Trace, you know, and, and dismantle, right? That protected remote is pretty much the thing I've got going for me in this game. Okay, so with the Desperado, he is good on memory. Two, three, four, five. Yep. Just trying to find a way to get ice out that is, you know, reasonable. So he'll be so any central run is gonna, you know, basically set him back instead of setting him forward, right? So if he runs archives, that sets him forward one credit and forward one data second. If he runs HQ, I wasn't resing anything. <laughs> that would also um, set him forward, right? I need to make sure that if he runs a central. The, at the after the run, he has less resources than what he started with, right? Should cost him more than one data sucker to run a central, ideally, and should cost him more than one credit. Okay, so he's SMCing, getting rid of the rotor turret. He just really wants R&D. That's, I guess he it knows that HQ has nothing, right? And the remote's empty, so I guess R&D is the place to go. But look, I'm not, you know, he's winning four to three. Right? And I'm not pressuring him into running. It's like there's no real urgency for him here. But he's acting urgent, right? He's spending his very last credit to, you know, push it to the edge. If I was him in this situation, I would have sat back for a turn or two and just built up uh, some money, right? Take, you know, take some credits and uh, draw some cards, right? So he runs r and I'm not going to res. He trashes my red herrings. Okay, spend even more money. Run R&D again. Okay. I'm getting a little bit lucky there, right? I mean, I don't know how many accesses of R&D he's had. Uh, scoring four points. I think that's slightly below average for what he should have scored um, with these runs. Right, in terms of accessing cards. Okay, so he's going back to HQ. Pop-up window. So now I'm actually getting money with that pop-up window. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, pop-up window. And you know what? Now I'm going to res the Draco, too. Why am I going to res the Draco now? Well, I've sort of realized he's not doing any weird account siphoning stuff or anything like that, right? So by resing the zero strength Draco against a zero Atman, it's going to cost him two credits to get into HQ, and then his profit of Desperado is one, right? So now he is no longer profiting um, on the HQ runs, and if he does make them, I'm getting money, which I really need with my one credit. Really kind of need. So, you know, for me, that's a safe HQ. Okay, so I draw a card, and I put it in my really safe remote, and I take two credits. 
now my comeback, you know, my the plan that I was hatching earlier to uh, to escape this lock is is starting to come to fruition here, right? You know, he, because he's he's spent every time he gets like barely enough credits to make a run, you know, to make something happen, he spends them all and does it, right? He's like, I got enough credits to do it, do it, and then he's back down to no credits. Um, and as a runner, though, he base you know. Runners need to keep getting money and using it, getting money and using it, right? Um, okay, so here comes Eli. Finally had enough money for that. Whereas the Corp, I just need to get the money once, and then I invest the money in the ice, and it's a permanent investment. All right, so I res that Eli once. I res that pop-up window once. He's got to pay for it over and over again. So he double-clicks my Eli. I don't res, and... NAPD contract. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, you don't say. Yeah. You know, if he would have just built up his money for a little bit, he could have had that NAPD contract. But now... No, nope, can't have it now. Just leave that there. That card is so good. It basically... You know, if the runner is poor like this, if you can keep the runner poor like I've been doing... Um, you know, it basically decreases your agenda density, right? It's agendas that they can't take. And now watch, if I put it in the remote on that ash, right? It's it's next to impossible for, for him to take it. Right? He would need to he would need to run, beat the ash trace, and have four credits left over after breaking the two ice. Or run, break the ice, trash the ash for three, and then run, break the ice, and take it all in one turn. You know, assuming that I go install advance, and the next turn, advance, 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 or install, and the next turn, res sand sand, advance, advance, advance. <laughs> Alright, so he installs a clone chip. I assume he's going to use his clone chip to uh, make some parasite happen, right? All right, so he's parasiting. What's he parasiting? <laughs> My pop-up window? Okay. Parasite the pop-up window away. Run HQ, spend a credit, gain it back, gain even more data suckers. He's got like a zillion of them. And access HQ. And here's a mistake. Mistake number one was this turn. Because, oh, what? You knew that was the only... You've been running R&D. You knew that was the only agenda I was holding, and you knew you didn't have four credits. Um, you accessed it, too. So, you know, at least... At, by, unless he, if you accessed some other card, he would have been like, oh, okay. Uh, maybe even run again. So it was actually helped him out that he... he yeah, you know, someone else is interested in the power of any PD contract. They want to read it. So they're reading the one that was scored already, or stolen already. Um, you know, he accessed it, and it's like, yes... Remember, remember your failure at the at the, at the cave. <laughs> remember the cave. <laughs> okay. So now, now, install and take two credits. Any PD contract in the super safe server with the sand sand under it. Let's see. If he wanted to get that, he's got the data suckers. So he would need two credits to break the ice. Then to beat the ash trace is going to be six. So he needs five more and four more than, than that. So he needs nine, He needs 11 credits. Um, he needs to generate somehow 11 credits by next turn to be able to take that NEPD contract. Uh, I guess, no, he could use two credits to break the ice, three to trash ash. Then two and six, it's five and six. Eleven, yeah, he needs 11 credits. Okay, so rather than do the 11 credit NAPD contract steal, he's going to maker's eye R&D with it, with a, through the Eli. So that's not a bad idea. And he gets a Beal. So, yeah, I think mathematically now at this point, it's 6-3 you know, um, with all his R&D accesses. That's, you know, I could have I lost by now easily. Uh, there was some luck involved here, but he's got six. Um, he's got six. Six is the number that he has. But this is where the game turns around. 
and the game turns around big time. The plan that I have hatched has finally happened. All right? Clear virus counters. Get them out of my face. Now, he's only got two credits here. If I was him, I would run HQ twice um, to start, because that is the place that you can fill up data uh, uh, virus counters right now. Right, but instead he runs archives to fill them up. An unknown quantity was over there, and it was a caduceus. So, right, I get my free res. Right, get my money back on that res, and for the end of the run, I make it trace three. He doesn't pay for that. He draws a card. Why don't you dirty laundry HQ with that card? Do it. Do you have a click left? Yeah, he ran archives. He drew a card. HQ is the only place you're ever going to see another data sucker. Alright, draw another card. Sure. And take a credit. All right. He drew all those cards. Sweep sweep. Boom. Hedge fund. Boom. He saw those when he makers eyed. Money problem solved. MBN is back in the game, everybody. Economy recovery. Look how fast this. Boom. Install an HQ. No data suckers. How are you going to do anything now? I got an Eli. I got a mystery ice on HQ. The remote is crazy secure. You got three credits and no data suckers. The game has reversed. I made it to the 10th round. Somehow I didn't lose yet. Six points for him, three for me. But I'm still alive, and he's finally fatigued. He's sweating all over. The plan I was hatching came to fruition. He tried to double-click the Eli. Toll booth, boom, R&D is closed to you, good sir. Goodbye to your three credits. And your run. And your run. The toll booth that has waited all game has been rezzed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He found himself in a corner. He can't escape. Draw some cards. I can draw cards, too. Oh, he's got to throw some out. Yeah, throw out your R&D interface. Now, see, I don't know if throwing out the R&D interface is a good or bad move here, right? Okay, I advanced my NAPD contract. Getting ready to score it. It's not like you can take it. <laughs> you do not have the money. The cost of everything, right? All these things I've put out on the table are really pretty cheap things, right? Caduceus is effectively free. Eli, Draco, pop-up window, RSVP, ice wall, ash, right? But all these things cost the runner so much money. Uh, oh, you're never getting an HQ again. Sorry. That's just not going to happen. Uh, are you going to jack out after the RZP, or do you want to encounter my Draco? Which you can't break. Oh, and you also can't spend any credits to fight the trace. So I don't even need to boost it, and it will hit you and tag you. So you're going to jack out after the RSVP. That's right. That's exactly what you're going to do. Install your clone ship. Go ahead. There's no pop-up windows or rotor turrets left for you to parasite now. I guess you could parasite the ice wall, but that won't do you any good. And there, now we go. There we go. The game is now 5-6. What are you going to do? See, the R&D interfaces are interesting because, you know, if he would have had them before, it would have been game over. If he would have had them earlier. But he never took the time to take a bunch of credits and install them, which would have, if he did that, he would have slowed down enough, you know, for those turns taking credits that I could have recovered and pulled off this, this lockdown uh, much earlier, right? Um, and now that the, the toll booth is up, well, um, you know, I mean, that's the, people love R&D interface, and, you know, it's, it's good card. There's no denying it, but the reason I'm not a fan is, is 4 is expensive, 
four is not cheap. That's, you know, the, the four that you spend on that is the four you needed to pay to get that NEPD contracts, right? Um, you know, and when you, you set up to install it, it's like, okay, you instead of you get one more access later, so your runs are better, you make fewer of them. But uh, you could have just made more runs instead, especially with things like Desperado and Data Sucker. You want to make more runs, uh, not fewer, better runs. Okay, so now that I'm at five and I've got money, uh, I don't have money actually. Now I have money. But Jackson Howard time, right? I need, you know, my HQ is 100% safe. My remote is super safe. My R&D is incredibly, every server I have is incredibly safe. So let's get the agenda. Let's get the money cards. Let's find a beanstalk, right? We just need to get to eight. We can score off the sand sand. We don't even really need to score off the sand sand, but, you know, we, we can't let him score even a single point, right? So, and he's starting to get some money, right? He's got five over there. And he's going to scavenge something. Oh, he's scavenging his, his Atman and making it five. So he's basically signaling to me, hey, I want to take out that toll booth, right? So he scavenged. This, this is the biggest mistake he makes the whole game, is forgetting what toll booth does. Runs R&D, double clicks Eli. There's a toll booth. And you don't have the three credits for the toll booth. That's an easy mistake to make. He's thinking pay one credit to bake a five strength. Toll booth, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess he also thought, hey, if I don't have the three credits, you don't pay them. That's right. If you don't have the three credits, you don't pay them. You also don't get in. Um, so now seeing that he has a five strength Atman and he get rid of his zero strength one, he's given up on every single server except for R&D. There is no, is absolutely impossible for him look, you know, in, to get anywhere except R&D. Uh, and he has to double click the Eli. He has no choice. Because he has to double click the Eli, that's two less credits he can take on the turn he runs, right? Because he's going click, click to break Eli, having no other way to possibly break it. And he needs to get four credits to break the toll booth. So, um, you know, I think I put a pop-up window out in front of there just to make it that much harder, right? That's a really significant pop-up window. I think it is. I'm not 100% sure it's a pop-up window. I think it is. Um, he's got a sure gamble, though. So that's going to help him a whole lot, right? Yeah, I think he just took credits and played Sure Gamble. So, But look, I've got money now. I've got money now. So now, and so I can res a Sand Sand and score. And there my hand is a Gila Hands. And I think I also have a Breaking News. So I'm basically thinking I'm going to win in two turns, right? I'm going to go boom, breaking Gila hands off the sand sand, boom, breaking news, game over. Um, he's got a lot of money. I think he can make an R&D run now, right, with that huge pile of cash from the Sure Gamble. Right? So the Sure Gamble bought him uh, one more R&D access. And it was a pop-up window, I think. Think. And then he's going to double click Eli, and he's going to spend four to break the toll booth. Get one from Desperado and one data sucker. And at this moment, when the game is so close to being over, when my, you know, after winning all that, you know, that struggle. I'm going to dilute the hell out of R&D with that Jackson Howard, you know, because I don't need to draw anymore. I've got the agendas to win the game in my hand, right? I don't need to draw them up now. Um, so I just need to make sure he doesn't win on this access because he has six points. He could just win right here. It's, it's very possible. So uh, I put my Jackson Howards back in there. Even if he trashes, you know, it's, it's okay to put, a, to put a trashable card in there because it's not like he can run R&D again, right? Because the two clicks on Eli. It's the only way he has to break it. So, dilute that R&D. Get more Jacksons. Maybe if I, you know. He cuts, he accesses. He shouldn't have shown that to me. It was a Jackson. <laughs> um, 
that was a bad move, trashing that Jackson, right? Um, because if he didn't trash it, he had enough money probably for another access, right? He could have, yeah, I think he would have had enough money for another access if he didn't trash that Jackson. Um, so there we go. I, I draw a card and score breaking news. I'm going to win next turn. No matter what, pretty much. And because he trashed the Jackson, I don't think he has enough money for an R&D access. Right? He would need one, two, three, four, five credits. But he has to have the five credits with three clicks remaining. Because one click to run and two to break Eli. Right? So he takes four credits, hoping to access R&D next turn. And I just score that Gila Hands. And the top of the deck was an Astro Script. So if he had not trashed the Jackson Howard, I would have drawn the Jackson Howard. Oh, but then his run would have been on the f next card, which wasn't... The card following Jackson Howard was not Astro Script. So his run um, would have hit that card. And then he would not have had enough left to run R&D again the next turn. So, yeah. Still, it would have... You know, it... Not, you don't know what those cards are, right? Before, you know, um, before we saw them, right? This is hindsight, right? You still, I, I don't think you trash the Jackson in that situation. Um, you'd only trash while well, running R and D if you can run and access again immediately to see the card that you just broke, you know, revealed underneath it. Um, Seeing as how he couldn't run R&D again immediately, and trashing the Jackson would actually delay his next R&D run, and he already gave up 100% on every other server. Yeah, trashing it wrong move. Could have had one more access before the game was over. But in the end, it didn't matter. Pretty good game. Two pretty big mistakes on the runner. That, that run where he ran into the toll booth, spent his whole turn on that, and, and didn't have enough. And also... Um, not having money for the NAPD contract play. Um, but also, you know, lots of luck on me. Uh, you know, not 100% giving up the game at R&D, only giving up six points. <laughs> that's, that's as many. You know, I'm glad to give up six points. As long as I don't give up seven, it's all good. Um, wraparounds are useless <laughs> in that game. Uh, yeah. And that's all she wrote. I only lost two games on the whole day in five rounds, both to the same player who ended up in first place, <laughs> uh, and I was in second place.